Hello, welcome to episode 32 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk and today is the 18th of January 2018. So today we've got some knitting, some sewing, including some dressmaking, some quilting, um, some other sewing, which doesn't really have a category, blast from the past, uh, gadget confessions, a couple of questions from the Ask Me Anything, and some information on my shop update. If you want to follow me on social media, you can find the links in the down bar. And also, um, I've got a Ravelry group where we have little chats in our discussion threads. And one of the threads that we've got open at the moment is to get things finished in for the end of January, get things off the needles so that we've got for a nice set of fresh needles at the end. Um, so I'm trying to finish three projects that I've had on my needles for ages um, and I'll talk to you about those a little bit later but it's been lovely seeing other people getting things finished um, to encourage each other you know and it's it's not all about finishing things that you don't want you, you think oh this is boring I don't want to do it anymore just just rip those those out you don't need them if they're not making you happy start something else <laughs> but finishing those things that you really want to have you know Anyway, so I wanted to explain a little bit more about the Christmas craft along that's going to be starting at the beginning of February. So I talked about this on the last podcast. So it's going to start the beginning of February till the end of November so that we get all our Christmas gifting and things that we want to make for Christmas done before December and then we can just relax. <laughs> So I've got plans to do a few tutorials that are related to Christmas things so that you guys can have a go if you want to. You know, it's not obligatory, but I'll do a few tutorials that are related to the sort of Christmas craft along theme. Um, and it's going to basically, there's not going to be a finished objects thread. There's just going to be a chatter thread where we all chat about what we're making um, for Christmas in the Christmas craft along. And then I'm going to pick winners each month and I've got some prizes to give out. So it's not all about finishing. It's all about sort of ha having a go. I like that community feel. <laughs> so I will talk more about that on the next podcast because the next podcast should be out on the 1st of February. So that'll be when the sort of Christmas craft along will start. And I just thought I'd say as well that it's not just knitting, it's all the crafts that are to do with Christmas. Anything that's handcrafted is going to be brilliant. <laughs> Right, so I've been gifted a gorgeous, gorgeous pattern, and this is this shawl pattern has got the most lovely lace, and it's like a triangular shawl, and it's called Keeping You in Stitches Shawl, and it was gifted to me by the lovely Katrina from the Katrina Workman Designs, and it's so pretty. Thank you so much, Katrina. Um, so I'll pop a picture up it of it up here so if anybody wants to see what it looks like I always like to see pictures of things uh, when people are chatting about patterns on podcasts so I'm going to try and do that as well I think that's oh I just one more thing I wanted to mention before I get into the crafty goodness um, I chatted to you about my targets for 2018 so the make nine I, I wanted to explain how I approach the make nine Rather than it being a list of things that I have to finish by the end of the year, it's more like taking time to stand back and think, right, which projects do I want to prioritise and do I really want in my wardrobe for this year? So I've got a list that I can go to and say, these are the things that I really need in my wardrobe. Um, and then I don't have to think, oh, what am I going to make next? These these are the things that I really need um, to to. to make my wardrobe a better wardrobe really um, so rather than just going on a whim and seeing a new pattern oh I must cast that on <laughs> I'm gonna really think about what I'm making rather than just being taken by the moment <laughs> So that's that's what it's about to me. It's not a lot of pressure. People have been saying, I think, on some podcasts that having a make nine list is pressure to make you finish those things by the end of the year. But I don't see it like that. It's just a list that I think, right, I'd like to get those done. But if I change my mind, it doesn't matter. It's just a way of getting myself organised, really. And I hope that's the way you see it, too. Don't think... Crafting is not supposed to be about pressurising yourself, it's just what makes you happy. We'll go on to the knitting. So first of all I'm going to talk about the finished objects. I'm pretty sure I didn't show these finished on the last podcast, but I finished my evergreen socks. I think I don't think I showed these on the last podcast. You'll have to tell me off if I did. <laughs> 
I probably have. In my head, I hadn't finished them before. So there we go. There's my evergreen socks. And these are by Madeline Gannon. And the yarn is by Lovely Tracy by Nora George. And the colourway is called Fur. And I really, really love these. Such a lovely base of yarn that Tracy used. It's really nice and squishy, but durable at the same time. So I'm going to be looking forward to wearing those all year round because they're not just a Christmassy sock. I was going to actually sew little beads on the Christmas trees. Well, to make them more Christmassy. But I, I thought, actually, I might like to wear them all year round because they're so nice. It seems a shame just to wear them once a year. So my next finished object is the underwing mittlets. Or underwing mittens, I should say. And this pattern is by... Erica Husa. I always have trouble trying to pronounce that. That's probably completely incorrect. But Erica Husa, I'll put the name on the screen. And I really, really enjoyed this pattern. So I'd taken some tips from uh, lovely Ava from the charm of it. And she changed the original pattern, had a darker moth in the centre with a lighter background. And I did it the same as Ava had because I thought they looked so beautiful the way that she'd done it. Um, and the original pattern also had some different colour work here and here on the wings but I decided to leave that out um, just because I thought that, that actually they'd go with more things if they're sort of just tones of grey but I'm really chuffed with how those come out um, there's a beautiful pattern on the back of the mitten and this really nice um, moonlight, moonlight faces of the moon and they're really nice, they fit really well. I found that, so I used the Knit Pick Stroll and I used 64 stitches which is recommended in the pattern and I found that after blocking they fit absolutely perfectly. Before I blocked them they were a little bit tight but because it's a super wash yarn they've stretched slightly and they're absolutely perfect for me. But I do knit really really tightly so I think some people found um, that doing 64 stitches was a little bit big for them so you might need to go down a needle size. Um, I think I used 2.5 millimeter needles for those so there we go another little item finished so those are my finished objects I'm now going to talk about my works in progress so I'd started working on my cozy memories blanket again last time I literally had to force myself to put this down and thought right I need to get some other projects off the needles so on the last episode I'd knitted up to here so I'd done four squares I thought I'm just going to do four squares and then I'm going to put it down because I've got to the end of the row and then <laughs> and then I should be able to get on with some other things so I did these four at the top I'm going to try and tell you what they are now this one here is a truly hooked and it's called Gone Rogue and that's a really pretty pinks and purples I'll show you the ball the colors aren't actually coming up as nice as they are see my camera doesn't pick up pinks this strip here is a really bright vibrant pink and it looks really lovely other colors are quite accurate I don't know why <laughs> so this one here also has a bright pink in it so that's not coming up quite as nicely um, on the camera and this one is called ah this one was tied up to the same it says this, it said this name on it, same as the other one, which I did show you on the last podcast, I think. Oh no, this was, a, this was a different ball, but there were three balls attached to this label, so I'm not sure what it is. So that one is the one I've just showed you in the ball as well. And then they, I put this, like a dark, um, beigey grey colour, which is a Malabrigo pearl. So they really, they're really nice. I've got a couple of really dark squares up here compared to the rest of my blanket. But I have got dark ones dotted around. <laughs> I thought I'd be able to roll the whole thing up, but actually it's quite big now. Um, so I said in the last podcast that I've got this long strip that I want to start doing another section alongside it. Um, so that it gets a bit wider rather than just this sort of short diameter. So that's coming on really nicely. It started to keep me really warm as I'm knitting it. So that's really lovely. And I forgot to say that these mini skeins are still the ones that I got from my lovely friends, Julie and Elsie. So thank you, ladies. Right, so that's my cosy memories blanket. I also, so I was talking about earlier 
some of the works in progress that I'd been working on for quite a long time. And actually, I just keep getting distracted from these things. Well, it's particularly this one. So this is my Gonyov shawl. And this pattern is by the lovely Ruth McKeon from Knitterarium. And it's a lovely textured, knit and pearl texture there. And it's a rectangular shawl. And then there's this lovely... Um, Oh, it's because it's not blocked, you can't really see it very well. If I show you the right side, it actually lays better that side. A lovely sort of scalloped edge on the one side. So I have done... So this is a, a provincial cast on, so it won't be yellow in the, in the end. Um, the last time I s showed it to you, I'd knitted to this marker here. So I've done quite a bit there. And the marker just below it shows the halfway point. And I've got three and a half repeats left of this pattern to finish. So I'm getting there slowly. If I fold it at the halfway point, you can see how much more I've got to finish. So I've got about that much more to finish. And then I've got to do some edging around a couple of sides. But that shouldn't take too long. So I'm getting on nicely with that. I'm really in the zone for this now. For some reason, for this pattern, I need to be in the zone to do it. Once you've sort of taken 10 minutes or so to get your head around the pattern again, I'm really, you know, I keep wanting to knit on it. And then I've, previously, I've kept getting distracted. I've had that on the needles about a year now. I'm going to finish it by the end of January. <laughs> so I'd also got another two projects that I'd had on the needles a long time. So the Emiliana shawl is something that I... I've had on my needles for over a year. <laughs> so this is the Emiliana shawl. There's a little picture. And I think to save me from putting it on screen, there's another full picture here. So I had start, I think you start on this corner um, when you're knitting it. And I'd started in the dark gray color, which is this one. And this is, let me grab the label. This is this Juniper Moon um, fine and it's basically made of a gorgeous 75% alpaca and 25% polyamide. Um, this is beautiful yarn and I'd started in this yarn to do that corner edge um, and I think I'd probably got to about here if you, you know, if you actually um, laid it caught in the corner flat down um, and I'd made quite a few mistakes in it so that's why I didn't pick it up for ages because I was just so annoyed that I'd made these mistakes but then I looked at this picture again and I thought actually I'd prefer it if the the, the lighter of the two colours I u was using was on this side so I ripped the whole thing out because there was mistakes in it anyway and I haven't actually cast it on just yet but at least I feel like I'm freed <laughs> So there's two colours I'm using are a very pale natural grey and a darker grey. This is granite and I think, I don't know if I remember what the, I've just put the label down and I've lost it. There we go. The colour is 2001 for this one um, and this one is called granite. I don't know the name for this one I'm afraid but at least you know the number if you're looking for it. But these are really gorgeous squishy yarns. So I think that once I've picked, um, I've started it again with the lighter colour at the top, that'll look really nice. And there's some lovely, there we go, you can see it a little bit better. It's two colours. Uh, it's basically formed by slip stitches, I think, to form the pattern, um, rather than proper colour work. So that should be fun. Um, I did want to cast it on, but I thought what I'm going to do is get my Gonyev shawl done first and then I'll get, get those back on the needles. And because I've completely ripped it out, it's basically a new cast on. <laughs> oh dear. And the next project, I've also had this on the needles ages, but I've ripped it out twice now. <laughs> um, so this pattern is called the Water Lily Shawl. Shawl? This pattern's called the Water Lily Top, and the pattern is by Megan Fernandez, and I must have cast this on about a year ago, I think. Um, but then I wasn't happy with how the stitches were coming out, how the, the density of the stitches. Was, I'd done a swatch, but then I ended up casting it on and then not being happy with it on, on a larger area, if you know what I mean. 
and I've done this much and it's a bottom down uh, bottom up sweater and I've done this much again <laughs> <laughs> and I've actually I'm changing this pattern so the original pattern is just straight up and down up until the lace part um, but I'm changing it so it shapes a little bit more around my waist to make it a bit more flattering and I thought I'd just quickly explain what I've done um, to do this now I've written a really scrappy drawer in here so this is basically um, just under my bust my waist and my hips and I measured the distance between under the bust to the where I want the bottom of the jumper to go to and I recorded that distance and then the distance from the waist to the hips or the end of the where I jump want the jumper to reach um, and I've worked out Obviously, I've got the distance that I need to knit up to the waist and then up to the end of the bust. Um, and then I've measured my hips, my waist and my under bust. And I've calculated, using my swatch, how many stitches I need to go around um, my hips, waist and under bust. And I've done it so that I've done no positive or negative ease. I've done it to the exact size and then it I have a little bit of leeway there it does stretch a little bit the material so it's a bit of a more flattering shape this is the idea anyway <laughs> so I've then casted on the right amount of stitches for my hip I've knitted the, the sort of band at the bottom and then I've started to decrease to reach the point where I need to be at the waist so I've obviously got a lower stitch number at the waist compared to the hip and then um, with my swatch I've calculated how many rows uh, I have in my knitting that will be between the waist and the hips and then I calculate how many stitches I need to decrease between here and here and then I'll just decrease at regular events. I think um, for mine I had 30 stitches between the waist and the hip area, uh, 30 rows rather and I'm decreasing every other row so it's nice simple maths really for you those of you who have not tried it out um, because I just I just didn't fancy having a very straight jumper but I might change my mind after I've done this because I've always just followed the pattern on previous occasions and I haven't really knitted many garments really not for myself I've knitted a few for my mum <laughs> she'd be laughing now because she'll have heard me mention her name so the yarn I'm using is called Yakety Yak and this is uh, the Ginger Ginger's Hand Dyed Yakety Yak 4 ply and it's in, it might it may as well be spring colourway so that's going to be really nice. I really didn't want to waste this yarn because it's not, it's not the cheapest yarn, it's got yak in it. Let me just find the label so I can tell you what's in it. I probably told you this on the last episode but... Hey ho! 60% <laughs> merino, 20% yak and 20% silk and I bought this on my last trip to Edinburgh when I visited um, for my my friend's wedding so that was lovely. So I'm on the path of actually knitting a garment now. Um, I didn't include these things on my make nine because I felt like I was cheating because I'd already sort of cast it on previously. <laughs> Um, but I have got um, things for my Make Nine in mind, so I'm not I'm not just completely ignoring what my targets were. So that's that's all the things that I'd had on my needles before. But I have cast a new thing on. <gasps> Naughty! It was because I wanted to cast some of my own hand dyed yarn on. So I dyed this colourway called Take On Me, and it's based on the video of the AHA song Take On Me and it's it's basically black and white so that's what I, I wanted to incorporate in there with some grey tones as well and I've tried to make this a micro, micro striping yarn and this is how it's knitting up I know that lovely Cassia from Rainbow Cloud had also cast some on and I'd seen how lovely hers was knitted up so I cast on some too and I think she's done, I think it was a yellow heel I can't quite remember uh, or cuff I think I can't remember but it was looking really lovely so I might do a nice bright heel as well I may do some of my girls just want to have fun as a heel on there because I think that might go nicely but there we go that's knitting up really well I wanted to show you how it looked in the rib as well so it looks quite nice in the rib but I think it looks more striking when it's in a stocking stitch pattern um, with those little micro stripes there. 
I'm not quite sure how it'd knit up if you decided to do uh, like a jumper or something in it, but it might be interesting to see. I wanted to mention that my lovely friend Jean had also knitted a pair of socks or is in the process of knitting a pair of socks in my yarn. And she's followed the vanilla latte pattern by Virginia Rose jeans. And I'll just pop a picture because I've, I've stolen one of her pictures that she put up um, of her sock knitted in the same yarn as well. And I thought it was quite nice because it's a slightly different pattern uh, for you to see how that knits up as well. I will have some shop news at the end of the podcast if you're interested in that. So we're now on to the sewing section. So I'll start with some dressmaking first. Um, so... I'd noticed that Sew so Over It had sent an email saying about the PDF club for the patterns and I just thought oh I need to do this so what it what it is is you pay five pound for the year so it's best for you to join in January and you get one free PDF pattern and there's only you can only actually have um the patterns are just PDF normally but if you join I think it's if you if you get your pattern by the end of February, there are some more patterns that are paper patterns as well that are included in the offer. But I chose the ultimate pajama pattern. Now I'd I could have picked patterns that were more complicated and sort of more worth the money. <laughs> Like the Betty dress, for example, you could get that, and that's normally eight pounds fifty for the PDF. Um, but the the ultimate pajamas is seven pound fifty for a PDF, so it's well worth joining, even if you just wanted one pattern. If you see what I mean. So I bought the ultimate pajama pattern because I thought I really need to make some pajamas. I'd bought this fabric absolutely donkeys years ago. Well, maybe not that long. Maybe about four or five years maybe more <laughs> so I washed it all up ready and I've made some pajama bottoms so I know Barbara hasn't actually got two legs <laughs> but she said that she'd show me she'd just have to demonstrate what these pajamas look like because <laughs> I know Georgina loves to see Barbara she she mentioned in her question on um the ask me anything thread so that was quite nice so Barbara come back from your holiday welcome back Barbara You'll never guess where she's been. <laughs> this is actually a Disneyland top that I bought um, from, I think it was California quite a few years ago. But I've been wearing it in bed, you see, because I've I've tried to sit, sort of dress a little bit more ladylike. <laughs> so I've been wearing this in bed and I thought that these pyjamas would go perfect with it because there's a little bit of a tart and a plique just on the bottom there. So these pyjamas are made out of a sort of a blue and a pinky tartan fabric and this is in a sort of winciette or brushed cotton fabric that I've used. I'm afraid it, you can't really see this very well. Let's see if I can tilt you down a little bit more. There we go. Um, it's not easy to show you pyjamas really. They're not particularly exciting because they're just sort of baggy trousers really. But I, so I graded the sew over it pattern up to my size, <laughs> because the largest pattern is a little bit tight on me. So I've graded up the pattern and I graded it on the top, the sides, um, and also, well, both sides and the top of each of the pattern pieces to get to the size that I thought would fit me best. Um, and I did find actually I think that these are a little bit long in the body for me because I'm not particularly tall I'm five foot three um, so next time I make these I'll probably just take um, I don't know an inch just off the top of the the trouser piece so that it fits me just a little bit better there's so there's an elasticated waist there the elastic fits in like a pocket that you create by folding and stitching uh, the fabric to the main body of the trousers and you make well you it says in the pattern to use ribbon but I've actually created a cord made a made a cord by just folding over some of the fabric and stitching it down to make because uh, I think it, it's nice when it matches and the the ribbon I think you need a really good thick ribbon if you're going to put it as a waistband so I pop that in and it's basically you use a buttonhole for this to come out of but I made a mistake <laughs> and I actually ended up putting the um, the waistband on inside out so the buttonholes are on the inside here. However, when I realised I'd done it I thought actually because this 
body length is a bit long here I might just turn that over and top stitch it down so that it's a little bit shorter in the body and it'll fit me better so sometimes mistakes actually end up better for the better really so I'm really chuffed with how these come out I did I overlocked the seams on the inside and pressed them open once I stitched them with the normal machine and then I just did um, a simple turned over hem and top stitched it down. I used a grey thread because I think that there's quite a lot of grey in this fabric anyway and I didn't have a thread that matched either of the other colours and I think grey works well with a lot of materials. Um, I didn't actually pattern match um, the panels which I wish I'd done in the end but I was a bit concerned that I didn't have enough fabric but I'm really pleased with them they fit absolutely amazingly I'm going to make myself a few pairs of these especially to go with these sort of novelty t-shirts that you get from <laughs> places like Disneyland um, and I think that'll be really nice and cozy for for sleeping in I've been a bit grubby and I've actually worn these a couple of nights and I have just put I just put the iron over them quickly so they didn't look so creased and to be honest this fabric doesn't crease too much so that was nice but I would definitely recommend um, but I would definitely recommend this pattern um, for somebody who's really looking forward to having some nice cozy pajamas the pattern pieces look absolutely massive because they're so baggy but they are so comfortable I did think that because the elastic is sort of floating around in this space here that it would flip over quite a bit but it doesn't I'm really pleased about that and I think that'll be a um, nice little sleepwear set so I'm going to be making a few of those so thank you very much Barbara so now we're on to the sort of quilting section so I'd had a couple of pieces of patchwork that I really wanted to finish and one of those pieces was this wall hanging that I've made and it's sort of a long wall hanging I'd actually made this as a, at a class at my local quilt group that was supposed to be for a cushion cover and the cushion cover was going to be this centre sort of panel here but I expanded it and kept going on and on so that it made a sort of a long wall hanging and if I don't think you can see very well but I've actually done some free motion quilting on there the light just picks up where I've done some circular quilting and then I've done some smaller circles inside some of the circles that I selected like here you can see on the lighter colours and then through the centre I've done some swirls from here on free motion so I did the free motion with the top layer and the batting on its own and then I've backed it because it's going to be a wall hanging I just backed it with some calico because a lot of my walls in my house are this cream colour and I thought rather than having a more complicated edge if I put a calico on the back if any sort of calico rolls over to the wrong side you can't really see it so I've, I did a technique called bagging out so that you can't actually see any of the quilting from this side of the piece. Well, you can probably just about see the, the stitches through this material. I'm not sure if you can on the camera. Um, but it just means that it just sort of tidies it up on the back side there. So in order to bag it out, I put my top layer with my quilted... Um, underneath there and then I've put on top I put the backing layer um, and in between the backing layer and this layer I put tri two triangles of fabric which turn out to be here well I had a square that was folded over so you end up with a nice um, no, with no edges showing just over here and here so you had a, a square and then fold it back on itself put the lining on stitch all the way round apart from a small uh, piece here so you could turn it the right way turn it the right way and you end up with these triangles of fabric now these are an easy way of putting a nice bit of doweling through the top of your work for it to hang on it's just a nice easy way of doing it rather than having to sew it on afterwards and then I can have the doweling on the wall and that will hang nicely like that there we go so that's going to go in my hallway I think it's a little bit dark um, for my taste normally 
but I, I just found these, I think it was from a jelly roll I'd had with all different blues that I popped together. So I, I really like it, but I'm not quite sure if it's a bit dark for the house. I'll see once I've put it up. <laughs> um, lastly, of my sewing sort of section, I'd been making a needle case for my DPN cases. And I'd started, I don't know where I've put it now, I'd started some embroidery, which I've... I've hidden up somewhere <laughs> and I'd done hand embroidery to go on the front but I decided it didn't really go with the style that I was doing on the inside of the needle case so I did some free motion embroidery of hearts on some applique uh, on a on some nice calico because I think that this is it just gives a nice sort of I don't know what you call it sort of style I like the style that the, the calico gives anyway. And then I just decided to embroider my name with free motion on the back. Um, and then I stitched hand sewn just a running stitch right the way around the outside. Now this has got a zip on it. And inside are my double pointed needles there. What I did think about doing was having sewn the sizes just on each of the pockets so I can tell which one's which. It's fine with these um, Knit Pro Zings that are colour coded, but the silver ones I have that are the Nova Silvers, they're a bit difficult to work out by eye what the sizes are. Um, so I've got my 15 centimetre ones here and the 20 centimetre ones in the top. And then I've got a big pocket here and a little zipped pocket, if I can do what looking in the camera. <laughs> A little zip pocket to keep some bits and bobs there and then I've just put some buttons I have shown this panel on the inside before so I think that the calico on the outside goes with this sort of look on the inside better than the embroidered work that I'd done before I should use that for something else um, I did change the way I normally do my zips for these zipped pockets I normally have the end hanging out um, so that the zip runs out of here and onto the end of the zip um, so this lies flatter so this does scooch the pouch up a little bit but I don't think that's too bad and it's a nice way to keep all my DPN needles together so there we go that's another finished object and I've been making that for absolutely ages it's ridiculous <laughs> so I'll pop that to one side so that's all the things that I've been working on this time. I just wanted to mention that this is my Tilly and the Buttons cocoa top that I'd made um, with the bigger neck um, that I'd made relatively recently. And I'd actually decreased the size on the just on the top of the shoulders compared to the blue one that I'd made in a dress um, in the dress version of it. And I think that this has worked out really nicely. I've worn this top absolutely no end. It is starting to bobble a little bit, and I have got threads all over me that I've probably just shown you. <laughs> um, but it is starting to bobble a little bit, but I have worn it. I've, I've probably washed it about 10 times already because every time it's clean, I'll just pick it out of the wardrobe just because it's really comfy and warm um, this time of year. So I do intend to make some more of these tops. Right, so we better get on to the next section. So the next section is Blast from the Past. Now I'm cheating a bit this time. <laughs> so... I made my mum a cushion that was made from hand quilting with um, colonial knots and also some beading in it and I, I haven't actually got it with me but I, I took a photograph a little while ago when I popped over to mum and dad's um, so I'll show you a picture of what it looks like here. So it's actually from a kit that I got from Sandy Lush and this is what the kit looked like and I bought this from the quilt show a, a few years ago actually it might be I don't know four years ago maybe so I think she's still got this pattern and she numbers all her different patterns like this so hopefully if you um, I think she's got a website as well so if you look up Sandy um, Sandy Lush on through Google you should be able to find her website and be able to pick up these patterns and kits and things so I got the kit that I had the cream cotton fabric some beautiful thread that was a 
very very pale sort of rainbow like very pale blue and very pale pink but you can't really see it on here but if you look up very closely there's a little shimmer of colour in there with some nice shimmery beads as well um, and it's made with some piping around the outside and I just popped a zip on the back um, so I'd really like to do some more hand quilting but just getting round to doing all the things I need to have my targets list for my quilting as well I'll have to have another make nine for that <laughs> So, um, we're on to the gadget section. Now, I forgot to tell you that I got this for Christmas. Everybody says they're wonderful. It comes in a little, little bag like this. I may have to make a new bag because it's made out of this yucky polyester fabric, but it's a gleaner. This is amazing, absolutely amazing. I'm yet to try it actually because there's some, a little bit of bobbling on this top. I'm going to try the finer, um, you put a little another little plastic thing on that's for a finer material. It comes with three of these like ends like this. Well, you can see all the fluff that I've got off my top. <laughs> um, but you, this one that I've got on there is for sort of knitwear and then there's for finer silks and things um, to get the little bobbles off. So I've only actually done it on knitwear and for knitwear it's wonderful and so many people love it as well. So that's my gadget for this week. I can definitely recommend it. So that's my gadget for this week. And then we're on to confessions. I haven't actually bought anything since the last podcast but... I did have a birthday, so I've got some things to show you. I had some books, basically. I had a book on how to adjust knitting patterns, which I thought would be really, really useful. I haven't actually seen anybody mention this, but I've had a little flick and a read through some parts, and there did seem some quite good tips in there about um, really designing your own... Um, knit work, knitwear really, and how to adapt your patterns, so that should be lots of fun. Um, Adam bought me this really cute little book about stitching, um, Stitch with Love by Mandy Shaw, and I've just put a bookmark in a couple of the things that I thought were really nice. So there was this really cute little suitcase embroidery, and then the Eiffel Tower little embroidery there, so I thought that was really sweet. There's a lot of red work in this book. Um, and the little sewing machine and a heart which is really lovely so that would be some nice inspiration for when I want to do some stitching some hand stitching um, Adam also bought me this lovely book on beautiful shawls lovely lace shawls I should have put a bookmark in a couple of my favourites in here but like this looks really unusual that's really pretty um, and I think the one on the front is one of my favourites as well so that's going to be really nice to use and then I also got a lovely surprise by my lovely friend Anne. And I don't think she knew it was my birthday, but she sent me this gorgeous book. I've been wanting this for absolutely ages. Thank you so much, Anne. It's absolutely beautiful. And I, I noticed that Kay from the Bakery Bears had got this for Christmas. And she was showing bits as well. So I'm, I'm going to find... There's some pages that have a summary of quite a number of stitch patterns. If I can find one of those... So they have pages like this and then it tells you how to do them. That's, this is the section on how to do yokes. Um, and then there's some bits on edgings like this. And most of the book is actually made up of these sort of patterns where you have a picture of how the stitching is going to look like and then um, your chart to how to do it and I think that's absolutely wonderful there's so many beautiful combinations of stitches in here so many ideas that I want to use now there's just not enough hours in the day <laughs> so those are some lovely books I've got but I've been very good my plan is to not buy any yarn until Edinburgh Yarn Festival we'll see how that goes <laughs> Because there are a couple of things that I really want to make, but in order to sort of get down my stash a little bit, there's too much in there. Um, I thought if I just not buy anything to the Edinburgh Yarn Festival, it'll be fine. We'll see. <laughs> so, 
we've got the Ask Me Anything section next. I've got two lovely little questions. Uh, one was from Robin and she was asking me about sock blockers. And she wanted to know whether I used them after every wash and whether they were worth buying. Now, I have answered this in the thread, but I thought some of you might be interested in this as well. So I do use my sock blockers. Every time I, I knit a new pair of socks, I tend to wash them and put them on the sock blockers because they look really lovely. Like the the um, evergreen socks, because they're all nice and blocked. I love the neatness of them. <laughs> but I don't... Every time I wash socks when I've worn them, I don't block them because I've only got a couple of pairs of sock blockers. So I certainly don't use them every time. And I think if you're just making socks for yourself... Um, I don't actually think that you necessarily need sock blockers, really. They're only really f to make the socks look really nice. Um, and I, when I wash my socks, I know that Adam wears a pair every day at this time of year. And, of course, I haven't got enough sock blockers. So I just stretch them out nice and as neat as I can and pop them on the radiator or hang them outside just as they are and if you don't want to invest in sock blockers you can always pin um, your sock onto um, some blocking mats or before I had blocking mats I used to basically just put um, a towel over the carpet somewhere and pin into the towel into the carpet although that does blunt your pins so it's not ideal <laughs> so you don't necessarily need them so on to the next question Marie was asking me whether I could put some of the um, yarns that I've dyed, if some people have knitted them up, into a thread in the Ravelry group. Now I opened this thread and already a couple of people have put some lovely pictures of their um, work of knitting in my yarn. So that's really lovely. So there's already a few uh, examples of my yarn in there if you want to go and see it. Um, so just so if you're thinking about sort of uh, casting on or buying some of my yarn if you go and have a look in the Ravelry group you can see examples of it before you've sort of purchased it which is I think is really nice what I'm going to try and do is every time I list a yarn that's hand dyed by me uh, in the pictures where I list it on Etsy I'll also put a picture of it knitted up some way if, if as that's if I've got some knitted up already Oh, so that's that's the Ask Me Anything questions, and we're on to the last section, which is shop update. So there's a couple of things I wanted to tell you about before I showed you some of the things that I've made for the shop update that will be this evening at 7 o'clock, so it's the 18th of January. I'm looking up at the clock, and it's clock. I'm looking up at the clock and it's half past one, so I'm hoping that I can get this podcast up before the, the actual shop update occurs. Um, so I've got some badges in my shop. That, that say Craft House Magic on, which I'll just show you. I've got one on one of the bags I'm going to show you. So these are in my shop at the moment. Um, I'm showing you it the wrong way around. There we go. So they're, they're one of those sort of standard uh, metal backed badges, but they're nice quality ones with a matte finish if you're interested in those. So those are in the shop for 80p. Um, and they don't cost any additional postage if you buy something else, which is nice. Um, I've been all the yarns that I've been dyeing so far are on a, a merino nylon base, but I am planning to do some different bases in the next month or so. So keep an eye out for those. And I've added, well, I will be adding this evening in this, this evening's update a yarn winding surface. So if you haven't got a uh, a swift and a ball winder and you don't know it's a pain in the bum to <laughs> wind the skein into a ball of yarn I'll wind it up for you for the cost of £1.50 so that's all the little bits and I'm going to show you what will be in the shop update this evening so I've got four of the colourways that I've already oh actually three of these I've already shown you dyed up so, so this is my Strawberry Fields Forever colourway again the pink don't come up very well on this podcast on this camera um, but it's a it's a nice lightly speckled yarn and I've actually changed this very slightly since the last update in that the background is less pink because I think it looks a little bit more delicate that way so there's that one I've got some more girls just want to have fun in their shop this is a yellow with a, a sort of splattering of an orange color so it just it's just not 
quite as just yellow there's a bit more depth in it there I know that my lovely friend Sue has been knitting a, a jumper in this um, hopefully I'll be able to steal a picture off her <laughs> and show you here and then this one is the Take On Me colourway, which I showed my socks were knitting up as. I think I love how it looks in the skein, the blacks and the greys. So that's what's the, what I showed you earlier, which was microstriping. And I've got one, this is a one of a kind yarn. This basically is, is like the bubble gum that I've showed you on previous podcasts. But there's a little bit, there's two different pinks in there that I've used together. Um, so that'll be in the shop as well. I should probably have to put a picture up here to show you what the true colours look like because the camera is not picking up pinks. <laughs> and then I've got a few um, hand sewn things in the shop. I've got some butterfly DPN cases here with three different types of butterfly on. Now these are for 15 centimetre DPN needles. But I have got some more of these fabrics, so if you want them for longer needles, 20 centimetre needles, I can do you, for the same price, some longer DPN cases. Um, I did pop some more of those in the shop with hearts on, which I normally do. Um, I've got, so I'd made some larger bags of this fabric last time, but I had some left and I'd only had enough to do a smaller bag. And it's got the sort of reverse of the pattern on the inside with a pocket and then I've got a handle on these and these are sort of sock size bags this material is very very durable so it's ideal for sort of um, carrying around with you all the time and chucking it on the floor when you're knitting so that's <laughs> this is what I do to my knitting bags so this is a really tough one some of the bags I make are made of quilting cotton they're not quite as durable um, but they're all washable so you can throw them on the floor like I do <laughs> I've made one larger bag which is a drawstring and it's got um, I put two pockets in this um, just because I thought that was a bit of fun and I had some small bits of fabric left and I thought well rather than it just go to waste I'll make it into a pocket inside there which I think is lovely and I've started doing these hand walls on the side of my bags as well and they kind of look twisted but I think that that falls nicely to the side um, when you're not actually holding it there and these are drawstrings as well so you'll find with the drawstring bags um, when you first get them that they're a little bit stiff to start with but once you've opened and shut them a couple of times um, they'll be nice and easy to use the, this is covered in some vermicelli free motion quilting on both sides and there's different panels on both sides there so this is a really big bag and it's got like a calico lining in there as well. Um, so that's nice for sort of jumpers I suppose. I have... I, I haven't done as many as I wanted to, but I wanted to make some bags that you could put badges on. So this is a black one that I did. It's actually made of the same material I'm, as I made my Harry Potter one that I showed you last time. But I've lined it in a poppy material and I've put a pocket in there as well. So this is a drawstring as well. And it's got a little one of my handles. I've done a shorter one on this one because it's a, a sort of medium sized bag. And this is a drawstring as well. And then with this bag I'm going to be giving one of my badges to go with it as well. Because it's it's a badge bag so you need a Craft House Magic badge. <laughs> so I think that's all my bags this time. I will be having more bags that are this style with the pieced, with the quilt, uh, pieced, sort of vintage fabrics with the quilting on the top in the sort of medium sizes which is this size in the next update um, which will be on the 1st of February but most of this update I've got multiples of, of yarn in my shop that I wanted to get out there because I think a lot of people missed out especially on the um, girls just want to have fun um, on the last shop update that I had um, so I think that's about it for today. Thank you so much for watching and thanks for supporting my shop and sending me some little messages in the down bar um, and chatting to me on Instagram and Ravelry etc. So I hope you have a lovely crafty week. Bye!